I know James Bond is a badass, but he doesn't have super strength as well, does he? He threw this grown man farther than the average Drew Brees pass was thrown in the 2020 season. Also, this guy comes through the window straight on, but clearly starts from the side. Has James Bond mastered the art of the curveball when throwing humans? One chance. Where can I find him? Molly. Bond plays the pronoun game so that this guy has to ask, wait a minute, this guy knew exactly who Bond was talking about. Pronoun game winner! Fatality! Where is Ernst Stavro Blofeld? <laughs> In case you confused him with George Anderson Blofeld of the Massachusetts Blofelds. They had a thriving fish hatchery called Blofeld's Blowfish, and yeah, they occasionally murdered people. We now come to phase four, the nose. The eventual twist to this is that Blofeld is actually having multiple people get plastic surgery to look like him. Why do something simple like change your own face and blend into obscurity when you can complicate matters with bizarre, grandiose designs for the purposes of world domination? I believe that's called the James Bond way. Also, the movie tries to cover up the fact that Blofeld doesn't look like Donald Pleasance anymore with this plastic surgery scene, but then completely flakes when it comes to why Sean Connery looks like Roger Moore after this movie. Keep the temperature at precisely 80 degrees. How would Bond know the exact procedure the medics would follow? How did he know these three guys wouldn't stay in there the whole time? Or that he would be left alone with the guy in the mud? As expected, this isn't Blofeld at all, meaning he knew 007 would be here tonight. Somehow, he thinks highly enough of Bond to expect that, but not highly enough to have a better plan to kill and capture him. I mean, he waits until Bond figures out that it's not him. Then, another Blofeld walks in with two guards and expects that to be enough. Why not have the whole crew here? What the hell is this? I guess it's some sort of spring-loaded trap? Why does it look like this? Why does it have seven holes on one side? How does this mechanism work inside a jacket pocket? Movie knows not to explain this to me because it's total f***ing nonsense. I mean, how does Bond prevent it from going off when he reaches in for his gun? Or simply moves around? What happens on the dance floor when you're less than 10 seconds away from the beat dropping? He'd lose a nipple! If you're gonna have a gadget like this, I want a flashback of Q telling you how it works and why it looks this way. <coughs> Movie fails to tell the audience when to take drugs. Of course, I'm going to have to take a sin off for Shirley Bassey and the title song. Yep, I had a bet with Chris that this movie would find a way to stick a cat between a woman's legs for minimum subtlety, and I was right. He said I already saw this movie and knew they were going to do that, so I didn't take the bet. F***ing Chris. You've been on holiday, I understand. And got married, but then his wife was murdered shortly after. Yeah, but we'll just skip past all that heartache. We've got diamonds to find. 80% of the world's diamonds come from mines in South Africa. Diamond exposition is forever. The scorpion. Mother Nature's finest killer, Mr. Wint. They really, really aren't. I mean, they can occasionally kill, but you're inflating their potency. The species you're looking for is Mosquito. Discount Crispin Glover. I mean, he could practically be his father. Ha! Even Miranda Tate thinks this death scene is terrible. He sent this for you! Not looking inside a package given to you by two strange men before you take off in your helicopter. This helicopter blows up way the hell out here, but when the movie cuts back to show the wreckage, it's much closer to them. How nice to see you again. Every single person Mr. Wint and Mr. Kidd encounter don't know who they are because they're secretly killing everyone involved with the smuggling. But somehow this woman interacts with them all the time. Later she gets killed too, but why does she know these guys and nobody else does? Mr. Franks. Your passport is quite in order. I enjoy seeing Money Penny as much as the next person, but isn't she M's secretary? Why would they have her doing field work? And if she's trained for field work, why the f is she M's secretary? If you will look to your left as we go down the Amster, you can see. Oh. In the time frame where the cops were getting a diver out here to retrieve this woman's body, they didn't take the time to clear this part of the waterway of all non-essential traffic? Weren't you a blonde when I came in? See, that's supposed to be amusing, because Tiffany Case is a blonde in the book. So if you had read the book, I'm sure this is either funny or annoying, depending on how much of a book snob you are. Either way, the sin, as always, is reading. Whether a girl is a blonde or a brunette. And which do you prefer? Oh, providing the collars and cuffs match. This must be some British way of saying the curtains match the drapes, but why would the collar not match the cuffs? And why does it matter if the hair on top matches the hair in the middle? Do you ever find yourself about to have sex and then call it off because of a hair mismatch? Drink has ice, drink has no ice. If the cartel had the ability to fingerprint Peter Franks, why couldn't they get a photo? These two guys in the background are lowering these missiles into an Aston Martin. Cool idea and all, but if that's where the missiles go, then there would be no room for the engine. Oh, by the way, em has been trying to get in touch with you. That Peter Franks fellow's escaped. Q is just bringing up this very important information now. That's the type of info you lead with. Peter Franks. Third floor. As far as Tiffany knows, she's met the real Franks. So why would she need to tell this voice on the speaker what floor she's on? Even if she thinks this might be a different guy, the lack of hesitation in her voice makes no sense. This exchange in the elevator goes on for all the some time. My God, you just killed James Bond. Would Tiffany know who James Bond is? 
She's involved in diamond smuggling, which, as Bond mentions to M earlier, is not a crime he ever gets called in for. I guess it's still possible she would know the name or who he is, but if Bond is this well-known among criminals, it's even less likely he would be sent out on undercover missions to infiltrate them. This even becomes a major plot point in The Man with the Golden Gun. I think we ought to let Mr. Bond carry the load from here on out. Wow, James is so lucky that the real Peter Frank showed up, because now he has a way of smuggling fake diamonds into the United States that he didn't have before. Amazing how an anomaly in the plot fixes the problem of not having a plan at all. I must say, Miss Case seems quite attractive. For a lady. If we weren't in the Dark Ages, we might have even been able to say that we're gay without the cheeky references. I know the diamonds are in the body, but where? Elementary, Dr. Leiter. Digestive Sherlock Holmes puns. So we've selected a private niche for your brother in our Garden of Remembrance. If this slumber guy is helping out with the diamond smuggling, why does he bother with sending Bond out to the Garden of Remembrance to make the payoff? Why this whole ruse? Why can't they just exchange the diamonds and the money here? Is it because the movie needs Mr. Went and Mr. Kid to confuse the plot? I think that's what it is. Super spy James Bond somehow doesn't recognize these guys. You'd think on a plane from Amsterdam to Los Angeles he would have taken a mental picture of the passengers. He even somehow missed Mr. Kid peeking at him through the first class curtain. Where's the real stuff, Franks? Where's the real money? Bond thinks these guys threw him into the furnace, but there's a lot of confusion because nobody knows about Mr. Went and Mr. Kid. But what's super odd is that Slumber and Shady Tree don't wonder who put Bond in the furnace. They just assume Bond took the money and I guess put himself in the furnace? Where the hell do you think you're going? Good question, since Bond came here in a hearse furnished by the Slumber Funeral Home, and he's in the middle of goddamn nowhere we're in Nevada. Does Bond walk to Vegas after this? Conveniently, seeing Shady Tree in this magazine is convenient. Don't go in there. We didn't get the real diamonds, so we need Tree. Alive. It's kind of hard to believe they didn't already know this before they got to the hotel. Well, that's it, Pussycat. Shot the whole wad. What do you say? Back to my place? But dude, you just said you shot your whole wad. Also, discount Natalie Wood. I mean, she could practically be her sister. Plenty of two. Like always, I'm unable to figure out if I should be disgusted or impressed with these Bond girl names. They're like porn names, but somehow more sleazy. Seven loser, the lucky lady craps out. A craps croupier would never say craps out on a seven. They would say sevens out. It's Peter Franks. Since we're going to find out soon, this is actually Blofeld and not Willard White, and he knows that's Bond and not Franks. Why doesn't he make Saxby aware of that? Five ten, hard ten. Hey, the devil. Except it's not a hard ten or a soft ten, because James rolled a six and a five. You handle those cubes like a monkey handles coconuts. And that simile is as terrible as a Scotsman playing a Spaniard in an action-adventure fantasy film. Well, that's $50,000! Is that what they paid to dub someone else's voice over yours? Nah, probably too expensive for 1971. I just wanted to point out how terrible this dubbing is. These uncool drooling fools threw plenty of tool in the pool. Sorry about your fulsome friend. Wait, she got those four goons to throw plenty out of the window just so that she could get laid? Game recognized game. Sooner or later, you'll have to talk. They'll make you. Why haven't they made him talk already? This plan to let Bond sleep with Tiffany Case and f around in the casinos while the bad guys sit idly by makes zero sense and adds nothing of interest to the movie. This guy nods to the dealer, and that means he needs to deal a specific card to Tiffany Case. He's already dealt the first card to everybody, so the second card is the one with the note on it. And it lands to the right of the other card, but Tiffany lifts the card on the left, and that's somehow the message card. Also, I'd like to point out that her chips are no longer in the betting circle, and Blackjack is a lie. The machine's fixed! Who's she, your mother? Kits. Blow up your pants. I... I don't know what that means. <laughs> what the f*** is this sh She was captured near Nairobi, South Africa. Which is fascinating because Nairobi is in Kenya, not South Africa. Felix, don't tell me you lost her. Hey, remember as early as Goldfinger when homing beacons existed? Yeah, those are pretty useful. I have no idea why I bring that up here, but Bond is gonna magically know where Tiffany is after this, so I guess nothing matters. And why did Plenty O'Toole go to Tiffany's place? How did they know each other? How does plenty fit into everything? I'm sure the movie will give us some answer to these questions at least. Nope. All I know is voices on a phone. They got me this place and told me to wait for further instructions. So wait, her contacts got her this place, but Bond doesn't know who the contacts are? Did they put this house in her name? Again, how did he know to show up here? Tell me now, movie! Now where is the stuff? Eastern Airlines announced the arrival Wow, it sure is lucky her contact waited until she put this toy in an airport locker, left, got all the way back home, and got interrogated by Bond, and waited even longer after that for Bond to see someone pulling it out of this locker. You'd think they'd be so hot for these diamonds they'd have taken it out mere minutes after she stashed it. But not these criminals. Now what I want you to do is follow this van in a subtle manner and not drive anything too conspicuous, so... 
Keep leading on that tutor, Charlie, and you're gonna get a shot in the mouth. That's gotta be the dirtiest thing anyone's ever said in a Bond film. The guy behind the van doesn't see Bond go in the back. Hi, sorry to bother you. I'm Klaus Hergersheimer. This is who Bond pretended to be earlier, so of course this guy walks in right after Bond leaves. But when Bond came in here, Dr. Metz instantly started shouting at him, like it was unreasonable that a radiation shield inspector would ever come into this room. So if these inspections are normal, why did Metz yell at Bond for doing his job? There he is, behind the rock! Jesus Christ, are these AI enemies who magically know where you've set up camp because the computer is cheating? Oh, sure, the moon buggy has an automatic drive feature. Because when you're on the moon, that's what you really need. A vehicle that runs by itself in which you have no control. Ooh, I'm blinded by the light. And I can't sleep until I feel your touch. There goes that son of a bitch and saboteur. Son of a bitch and saboteur. These cars are evenly spaced so Bond and the pursuing cops can conveniently switch from lane to lane between them. Las Vegas traffic is so accommodating. It should be easy to hem 007 in this parking lot by blocking the exit out of here, but somehow 500 million cops can't figure this shit out. We see Bond driving towards a boat, but it definitely doesn't have a convenient ramp behind it. So of course it has a convenient ramp behind it when Bond needs to jump over some cars and escape. Also, why is there a boat parked here? This is a hotel parking lot. Lean over. I know you could say this for just about every scene in the movie, but this works. Wait, did he switch from leaning to the right to leaning to the left? What kind of BS fuckery is this? He needed a ramp to even do the first move. How did he get it to lean to the other side? I don't believe he has enough momentum to make this kind of smooth transition, and I think the movie would have shown us a wide shot of the stunt if it was possible, but it didn't. And uh, Hamilton is right out here. Which makes no sense, because Bond and Tiffany are clearly in the room where it happened. And by it, I mean f***ing. Was that not clear? So 007 is staying at the White House, and he casually walks out this window onto what looks like a huge terrace. We've seen the exterior of this place several times, and there is no such terrace anywhere. And we've seen this place lit up at night. It does not have any of these neon blue stars anywhere. So how is this supposed to be the same hotel? Also, Bond walks straight to an elevator that luckily is already sitting there, and is accessible, and can be ridden on the outside. He just, on a whim, went outside and found the most convenient terrace and elevator ever. Look, I don't think anything about Bond's trip to the top floor of this hotel is all that possible, but it doesn't seem all that necessary either. It seems like Bond could find an easier way to the top of this hotel that would require more spy sh and less Alex Honnold sh Climbing up a wire or rope without gloves. Why can you open these windows from the roof? Doesn't even look like you can open them from the inside. And you'd need to get a ladder to do it. This is like the Batman world for open roof windows. Howdy, welcome, son. We've been expecting you. You were expecting Bond to ride the outside elevator to the top of the building and do a bunch of crazy stunts to get into this very room? <laughs> I don't think so. Also, since Blofeld is about to reveal himself to Bond, why is he still using the Willard White voice modulator? Bond kicks the cat, and because he thinks cats are so goddamn loyal, expects the cat to jump to the real Blofeld. But the movie doesn't know how to cat correctly because there is no way a cat is going to jump to its owner after being kicked. It's going to run away and not trust humans for 15 minutes. What do you intend to do with those diamonds? If I were to break the news to anyone, it would to you first, Mr. Bond, you know that. I know the Austin Powers movies covered this, and everybody who ever watched a Bond film covered this, but goddamn, what is the use in keeping Bond alive? I guess the idea is that he wants to beat 007 more than he wants to kill him, but I've seen Blofeld try to kill Bond many times, and he even tries to get Mr. Wint and Mr. Kidd to kill him right after this scene. And nothing really makes any sense. I mean, just shoot the bastard. <laughs> <laughs> What's so goddamn funny? Mr. Kidd and Mr. Wint's plan to dispose of Bond is strange. A couple of things have to work perfectly in their favor. They have to hope the gas keeps Bond asleep for the amount of time between dropping him off in the pipe and this construction crew placing the pipe underground. Kidd and Wint also have to assume that this construction crew is moronic enough to not notice a man who is 6'2 lying in a piece of pipe. Both of these things happen, but it doesn't make the plan any less idiotic. All right, Charlie, it's your turn to play hunchback. I swear to God, nobody in this scene is actually talking. They dubbed this shit in after they shot it. This conversation is a lie, movie. I just saw James Bond in the casino. That's impossible. I really do think Blofeld operates on the idea that if he orders something done, then it's done. So when Bond survives something he's not supposed to, it's always a surprise to him, and it's always impossible. Mr. White is perfectly safe at his own summer house. It's on the ridge, about ten miles out of town. Shut the f*** up, you summer house location-knowing son of a bitch. Also, if Bert knows where Willard White is being kept, why would Blofeld feel the need to give away the location over the phone? Also, also, if White was such an important character in this case, why hasn't anyone checked his summer house if this place is so well known? Give me five minutes to get up there and five minutes to find White. Since Bond has Felix and a whole team of agents with him, why is he going up to the summer house by himself? I'm Bambi. And I'm Thumper. 
while not as sexy as the Disney characters they're named after, this fight scene does nothing except give you a boner. Back in 1971, scenes like this were like guitar solos, basically a signal to start making out with your significant other. Couples knew to stop making out when the ushers came in and didn't tell you to stop. These women have been beating Bond's ass for two minutes straight, and now, somehow, he's got the strength to overpower both of them while he's being drowned. There's absolutely no explanation for him turning the tables right now, except that the movie needs to get on with it. This dumb motherfucker thought he could come and blow away over ten federal agents by himself. But I'm still only two steps away from the slammer if they want me there. I thought you might be able to put in a good word. Q's been here for like a day. How would he have anything good to say about Tiffany after spending that much time here? Did Q and Tiffany f*** off screen? Why does this cat raise a red flag for Tiffany? She hasn't met Blofeld yet and wouldn't know anything about the cat. Also, if this is such a dead giveaway for Blofeld, why would he carry the cat around everywhere he goes? This tale is as idiotic as Teddy KGB eating cookies. <laughs> Tiffany was presented initially as an intelligent and strong character, and now that she's had sex with Bond, she's getting herself kidnapped because she can't figure out how to perform simple secret surveillance. Also, Felix has agents at the casino. Why wouldn't Tiffany alert them, or at least tell Q to, before she took off after Blofeld? I'd so dreaded the prospect of making this tedious journey. Hello. I don't know if they expected Tiffany Case to show up here, but I'm guessing they didn't. Anyway, why isn't Blofeld using one of his secret ways out of the White House that we saw Mr. Wint and Mr. Kidd using earlier? Why does he have to disguise himself when he has an underground passage? Premature first aid separation. It doesn't make sense. Indeed it doesn't. The guy talking to Willard White just said that the satellite was launched 24 minutes ago. First stage, on average, would burn for just a few minutes, and satellites are normally in orbit within 15 minutes. There would not be enough fuel to burn for 24 minutes, nor would there need to be. A vast supply of diamonds being manipulated by an expert in light refraction. I believe you mean light refraction, James. Let's leave the scientific speak to the experts. This laser just destroyed a submerged submarine. How did the satellite get such an exact fix on a moving submarine deep underwater? How did the laser cut so perfectly through the water to even get to it? Diamonds might be forever, but they can't produce magical lasers. So realism! Phone call for you from Washington. Urgent. I'll catch it in the john. Talking on the phone while using the john. These guys get set on fire because of the laser, but earlier, when the laser was destroying the missile in North Dakota, these guys didn't burst into flames. From Alaska to Florida, from Maine to Oregon, from Texas to Baja, California. James simply says the state's name throughout this brainstorming session. But when he gets to California, he specifically mentions Baja, which ends up being the information they need, but he didn't know that. I haven't got a thing at Baja. Also, luckily for 007, Blofeld couldn't resist including a 3D model of a building that is not on White's map of properties. Why he needed it, we'll never know. There is still no official government explanation of the apparent simultaneous nuclear accidents in North Dakota and Russia. How the f*** were those simultaneous? The satellite blew up the North Dakota missile, and then it blew up the submarine in Russia. The word then prevents those things from being simultaneous. What if they decide to attack? Calm yourself, Metz. This farcical show of force was only to be expected. Absolutely none of this would have been expected if you didn't put this location on White's map. How did Bond attach the parachutes without opening up the flotation device? Can I tag along, Ernst? I'd put something on over that bikini first, my dear. Puritanism. Well, if we destroy Kansas, the world may not hear about it for years. That's Kansas. It all seems so perfectly simple. I suppose one just presses that and out it pops. Why would you let anybody, much less 007, have access to your control bank? Why isn't this at least behind glass? I'm beginning to think Blofeld is living in Groundhog Day, and this is the first time he thinks he's ever met James Bond. I did it. I switched the tape in the machine. Saying this loudly in front of the bad guys, even though it turns out you f***ed it up. They put this asshole in a room all by himself, and it has flammable containers, an escape hatch, and all this rope they didn't even bother trying to tie him up with. Prepare my bathroom sub immediately. <laughs> All systems interlock. Commence lift. So you had the vision to bring along... <laughs> Excuse me. A bathos sub, but you put it in a place where you needed a crane to lift it off the oil platform and into the ocean? You're right. What could go wrong? Helicopters fly by and see this crane putting something into the ocean and yet don't shoot at it. Man, remember when Tiffany was an interesting character earlier in the movie and not just a cartoon character in a bikini? Ah! Ah, well, I guess they won. Is Blofeld dead or alive? Did the missile launch? Who cares? The only important thing is that James and Tiffany get to go on a cruise and f*** a bunch. I feel like that was the central plot of this movie anyways. I hear it was originally titled James Bond's D*** is Forever, but the studio thought people would confuse that title and think it was a western. These dicks don't even have an employer anymore. At least I don't think. Why did they even care at this point? There must be some mistake. I didn't order any. 
Super spy James Bond continues to be perplexed at identifying people he's seen before. Granted, he didn't take a mental picture of the people on the plane earlier, and I guess he could have missed these two guys at the funeral home, but he's so clearly ahead of everybody in every situation that I find it impossible he doesn't know who they are. Happy selection, if I may say. Mr. Kid, Mr. Wint are really taking their time to sell this ruse. Good thing there's not a bomb with a ticking clock on the table. And I've smelt that after shave before. James Bond is no doubt a great secret agent, but, but is he a can-remember-the-smell-of-aftershave-while-knocked-unconscious kind of secret agent? I'm not sure about that. And you were so smug about identifying them as rats, you decided to underestimate them by giving away that you knew they were the bad guys and didn't prepare for any sort of attack. You just sat there like they weren't a threat at all. Ooh. Whoa! Went and Kid had so little time to get out of the room before the bomb exploded, it makes you wonder why they even tried to do the Plan B killing the way they did. You know, in America it's bling bling, but out here it's bling bang, huh?